Against the background of high-profile world events, the awarding of the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2022 remained in the shadows. The prize was awarded for proving that our universe is not real. We didn't misspell it then, reality is more complicated than it seems. And Elon Musk's theory that we live in a simulation has taken on new colors. In the next couple of minutes, we will try to explain the revolution in understanding the universe and the cosmos in simple words. Let's start by understanding what is even considered real in terms of physics. Paradoxically, the question has been a problem for the scientific community for centuries. Intuitively, we can separate our dreams, with a naked Scarlett Johansson riding an otter around Hogwarts from reality. But science doesn't like intuitiveness, it likes clear definitions and dry formulations. You probably often heard the definition of local realism, localized reality, and other variations where the word reality is combined with locality. This is the very definition of reality that existed before 2022. Real in physics since Newton's time is defined as something that has definite and finite characteristics regardless of the observer. Scarlett Johansson exists only in your dream, appearing and disappearing. But the New Year's tangerine in the store will be orange before you even go shopping. There is also a rather popular philosophical question about a tree falling in a deserted forest. Will there be a sound of falling if there is no one to hear it? From the point of view of physics, the question has long been irrelevant. Of course there will be a sound. A tree has physical characteristics, and therefore will interact with the world around it, not always predictably, but always according to the laws of physics. And humans in this equation can only act as eardrums to pick up the sound. In other words, knowing the characteristics of an object, its behavior can always be predicted. This is actually the second postulate of reality voiced by Newton. The famous scientist claimed that if you know the positions, velocities, and characteristics of objects, as well as aware of all the forces that act on them, you can easily predict what will happen to them in the future. And in the past as well, looks pretty ironclad, doesn't it? And Einstein was a big supporter of Newton. And the whole of astronomy, indeed, planets, asteroids, and other galaxies have been discovered on this principle. Now we know the characteristics of the sun, its speed, and all the forces acting on it. And we can easily predict that the next solar eclipse will happen in 2024. By the same logic, uranium has been discovered, and the fate of the objects of the solar system is scheduled for millennia ahead. The word local is added to the definition of reality to clarify the very process of interaction between objects. Only nearby objects can influence other objects, and the speed of propagation of this influence has a familiar limit in the form of the speed of light. It is important to realize that local and nearby objects in physics do not necessarily mean nearby. The star Aldebaran 65 light years away is considered local to an observer on Earth. The light from it falling on the retina of the human eye and interacting with it is local because on its way it spreads through the nearby space and does not violate any laws. Propagating, pardon the columbarus at the speed of light, but no higher. In other words, locality is a caveat to exclude esotericism, supernatural, and other conventions from the definition of reality. All in all, the definition of reality is strong and logical. And then quantum mechanics came on the scene. You're all aware of the experiment with electrons and two slits. If you don't observe the electrons, they behave like a wave. If you add an observer, the electrons get confused and start behaving like particles. The description is of course very superficial, and we apologize in advance to all physicists. Now we don't need to delve into the experiment itself. But the main thing to realize is that quantum mechanics from the moment of its birth began to break the classical definition of reality. A tangerine on a store shelf is always orange, even if no one is looking at it. And the electron is supposed to be a well-defined physics object and behave the same way whether someone is looking at it or not, our reality has cracked. But at the beginning of the 20th century, few people paid serious attention to it. Einstein, for example, did not call the experiment with two slits and it's like fakes. The scientist until his death believed that we trivially do not have the necessary devices, accuracy, and laws by which these particles behave. In his understanding, the definition of reality from the fights did not give, just the level of physics and the luck of the smallest particles did not allow to understand. That was settled, and the 20th century passed under the ages of rivalry of two systems. On the one hand there were quantum physicists, who every year found more and more mystical and mysterious properties of elementary particles, declaring that our world works quite differently. And on the other side were classical physicists, who condescendingly declared that someday we will connect everything, just now there are not enough seleniums. 
The battlefield of the two systems became the einstein podolsky rosen paradox, or EPR for short. When studying the behavior of elementary particles, quantum physicists were horrified to realize that they can be in two places at the same time, have two characteristics at the same time, and influence each other. The electron, which from physics lessons at school we remember as a kind of satellite orbiting the cathom, turned out to be absolutely not. In reality, the electron is simultaneously in every point of the orbit, just with different probabilities. Schrodinger's code and other quirks of quantum systems are probably at least superficially familiar to you. But the EPR paradox is out of the rule, if only because it is scientifically proved that it is impossible to explain it from the point of view of usual physics. To understand the paradox, imagine that you and your friend Vasily went to different ends of the solar system. From the Earth to you throw two coins, they begin to spin, and at the moment when Vasily will see the eagle flew his coin Rafati, he will clearly know which side of the coin fell to you. It sounds silly because it is pure chance and Vasily should not know what will happen to your coin based on the data of his. However, in the quantum world this is exactly how it is. Moreover, in the experiment Vasily does not just learn about the state of your coin, he directly affects it. Einstein on this occasion uttered the famous phrase, God does not play dice. However, modern research shows that he does. Quantum teleportation was described in 1993, and in brief, it involves creating a pair of coins similar to our experiment. They are quantum entangled, and it turns out that over a huge distance we get a coin whose state is predictable depending on the first coin, and don't care how far away it is. Sounds like the magic of the new Jun 2017. Chinese scientists have teleported a particle to a distance of 1200 kilometers using the Modium satellite. It's not exactly teleportation, of course. The procedure is more like cloning the particle's state and reproducing it elsewhere. But it works, and there are dozens of successful experiments, which brings us back to the question of the reality of our world. It is logical to assume that changing its state in the process of quantum teleportation, particles somehow exchange information. The only problem is that in this case, it happens faster than the speed of light, which is impossible in the current definition of local reality. At least the expression of locality is at risk because of the speed violation. Things got even worse when the chair that elementary particles have a predetermined state came into question. This is actually the subject of the work of John Clauser, Alan Aspect, and Anton Zillinger, winners of the 2022 Nobel Prize. They study photons and other elementary particles to find an answer to the question voiced by Einstein. Do we really lack the equipment to measure the characteristics of tiny particles? Or do they not exist after all? and only appear at the moment of measurement. The team of scientists prove that the characteristics of elementary particles do not exist. They appear only at the moment of measurement, and consequently, and the real universe cannot be called our universe. To understand this clearly, let's go back to the two-slit experiment. Yes, the behavior of the particles and the pattern they form is from the observer, but we cannot predict exactly where a particular particle will fall. Einstein believed we didn't have enough knowledge to predict its behavior, but Nobel laureates have proven otherwise. Some aspects of how the quantum world works are indeed unpredictable and random. Tiny particles have no physical parameters until we measure them. And there are no laws, formulas, or definitions that we lack to relate quantum physics to ordinary physics. It must be studied for what it is. For our reality, friends, is a quiet horror. It turns out that the universe behaves differently at different scales and there's no way to package that into human logic. What's predictable in the visible world is unpredictable in the quantum world, but in the end all objects of the visible world are still made up of particles of the quantum world, which are absolutely unpredictable and show their characteristics only if you look at them. And the funny thing is that somehow the connection between two completely different worlds works. It's such a mystery. The most Mobilov prize in physics, Rady and Lonmask and other prominent proponents of the theory, stating that our world is a simulation. Simulation in the quantum world is indeed painfully similar to the way modern machine learning neural networks work. They don't have a picture of a raccoon in a Ravikop suit on their hard disk. But if you ask, the neural network will form queries and dump the result. In the same way, tiny particles don't have characteristics until they are asked for them. Aren't we in something of a computer that saves resources and doesn't bother drawing small textures until we look at them? Unfortunately, it's hard to deny that. However, underestimate the pokiness of physical discoveries too. Electricity seemed like magic to people at one time, and perhaps in the future there will be a simple and straightforward answer. 
Do you believe that we live in a simulation? Leave your opinion in the comments and we're done for now.